This public service program has been prepared and presented by Crime Stoppers with the cooperation of Michigan law enforcement authorities and the family and friends of the victims of the crimes described in the hope that viewers will call in with tips which will help solve these crimes in southeastern Michigan. Crime Stoppers relies upon information provided by Michigan law enforcement authorities in the production of this programming. Crime Stoppers doesn't assume responsibility to update this public service presentation as featured crimes are solved. Major Nelson was outside this party store on Fankel at Freeman, Detroit's west side. It was December 8, 2007, in front of this Coney on this sidewalk right here. 6.45 in the evening. Grimager Nelson is standing here. Someone walks up and shoots him on December 8 of 07. Right after that, as he collapses, another man comes from this parking lot and also walks up and shoots Mr. Nelson. He fell in the parking lot. Grimager Nelson could not recover from the gunshots. He was dead at the age of 34. The trail has since gone cold. Police are baffled why Nelson, who had never been in any trouble, would be the victim of a shooting. Could there have been a mistake? Was he not a target, but perhaps resembled someone else? Police need tips to close this case. Nelson's family misses him every day. His family was so important to him. He really loved his family. He was always around. He just loved doing things with his family. He always made everyone smile. And, you know, when you saw his smile, you knew everything would be okay. Grimager Nelson's mother says his death has destroyed her. That's my child. I lost him. And he can't be replaced. To know that, that somebody just shot him in cold blood, you know, is, is unacceptable, you know, to me and my family. And we just looking for some closure. She was my number one person, and I was her number one fan. Whoever done this, by all means, please step up and allow yourself some relief from this, because she is greatly missed from all of us. When he left, he told me he loved me and he will be back. I didn't know it meant being back, meeting him in the promised land. It's almost six years later and it still feel like yesterday. My son was a man of God. He was a family man. He was a God-fearing man. And he helped all those who are in need, probably the one who pulled the trigger. I miss you, I love you, and I just wish you, wish you were with us. We are so proud of her, and I guess as a big sister, that means a lot to a little sister to say I'm proud of you, and I was proud of her. July of 05, someone walked into their Waterford home here on the 5400 block of Brunswick Boulevard. In the middle of the night, the couple was executed as they slept side by side. 39-year-old Kenneth Cannell, Jr and his girlfriend, 41-year-old Pamela Barnes, were both shot in the head. This was not a robbery, and no one has ever been arrested. A judge approved a search warrant, and Waterford Police joined Oakland County Forensic Investigators as they searched the property at West Buno Road in Milford. For now, investigators are not revealing what they were looking for or if they found anything. Just give yourself up, you know. You're gonna be caught eventually. You can't hide, you know. Just come forward and, uh, Turn yourself in. You know, detectives and the police department, they're working hard, but we also know that it's all in God's timing and we have to find peace in that. It's been devastating and it doesn't get any easier, that's for sure. That was Jesse Cannell, Kenneth Cannell Jr.'s stepmom. These families are hurting, they need justice. We need tips to solve this case. Who killed Kenneth Cannell Jr. and his girlfriend Pamela Barnes in Waterford, July of 05? Crime Stoppers right now is offering a $2,750 reward. You won't give your name. Do the right thing. Pick up the phone and call 1-800-SPEAK-UP. He don't want to come forward or aid the police. And I'm asking him too, if he's watching this, to do the right thing. Come forward, tell about what happened. It ain't all about being a snitch.
every day I wake up, my heart is broke. I will never see my brother again. And I just can't believe y'all just took him like that. <laughs> like, my family is so torn apart now. Me, Martine, Tiffany, and Hurricane are so close. We did everything together. We even, like, ran away from, like, my great-grandma's house together. We were so close, and now I feel like a part of me is gone. People dying every day over nonsense, material things, nobody life. People life is worth more than that. He smiled like I ain't gonna never see that again and I miss that. And ain't none of this gonna bring my brother back. But he do he ain't deserve this, but he do deserve closure. Now I have accepted the fact that my son is gone. But I hope that with the public help that we can get some tips so I don't have to accept the fact that I don't know why. Michigan State Police have a manhunt underway right now for two convicted sex offenders. Trooper Craig Tour is working hard to find these two individuals. Trooper Tour joins us live right now. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me, Ron. One of these individuals you're looking for will have a picture. Henry Johnson, why should our viewers be looking for him? Henry's on the sex offender registry for forcible sexual contact with the individual. Uh, he stopped checking in with the Michigan State Police or any law enforcement agency for that matter. Uh, he currently has a felony warrant for failure to comply with the Michigan sex offender registry requirements. Here's a picture we're looking, uh, we assume this is current, he could look uh, very similar to this? Yeah, this is uh, one of the most current pictures we do have of him. Okay, Henry Johnson, if you see him, call the Michigan State Police. And your other individual you're looking for tonight is Terry Brooks. Why should our viewers be looking for him? Terry Brooks also is on the sex offender registry. He is a non-compliant sex offender. The crime that put him on the registry was he engaged in a sexual contact with the individual that was under the age of 13. Uh, he's not checking in with us as well. He does have a felony warrant for the sex offender registry violation, as well as an instant offense of an indecent exposure. So this is a guy that's out there on the street that uh, we really want to get him back into our custody and find out really what he's been up to. A reason to believe that Fox 2's Michigan's Most Wanted is profiling a case for a man wanted for a shooting in Highland Park on October 11th, 2012. This man fired a shot, wounding a 45-year-old woman at the Family Dollar on Woodward Avenue at Manchester Parkway in Highland Park, of course. A detective from the Highland Park PD is Detective Paul Thomas, working hard to solve this case. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, sir. What do you think happened here? On this particular date and time, an individual uh, appeared in a ski mask outside a family dollar store located in Highland Park. Uh, the individual with the mask fired numerous indiscriminate shots. Firing more than once? Yes. Several times? Several times. Uh, at that time, a 44-year-old woman was wounded and... Uh, is suffering some serious complications as a result of it, some serious health issues. Uh, the Highland Park Police Department is interested in solving this crime and removing this dangerous individual from the streets of our community. We're showing some video here. There's some broken glass. He's firing shots at the family dollar. She's hit. He's out in the parking lot shooting then. Did he walk up? Did he drive up? No, this individual approached on foot. Mm -hmm. and uh, fled on foot. Okay, anything stolen? Nothing stolen. Uh, we actually have no motive uh, other than that he may be just a deranged individual armed with a handgun. Please, whoever, whoever, hear this message, just come forward. I don't have no animosity towards you. I really don't, but I just want to know why you want to come to my house and kill my child. You took a life, you chose to treat her like an animal, and that's not right. Vernon Lope speaks out on behalf of his wife, Sandra, the 37-year-old mother of five children, left Santino's Bar on Van Dyke at 1 a.m. on December 16th. She was walking home when she was hit by a vehicle. That driver continued on more than 600 feet, dragging Sandra under the vehicle. The driver eventually stopped. Investigators say someone got out of the vehicle and pulled Sandra Lope's body from underneath. Then the vehicle drove off. Sandra was discovered 
in the parking lot of a mobile home park on Van Dyke near Campground Road in Washington Township. Please, you know who did this, and you know who you are out there. You owe it to God, you owe it to me, you owe it to our family, and you owe it to our kids. You have to come forth. We have to have closure. What you did is just unbelievable. This should never happen to anyone, but how do you explain this to five young children? You know, it's not fair to us to have had to bury our sister. We should not be here. We should not have to do this. to just think about the good times. So that's what I'm doing. That's what we've been trying to do. We just want to know what happens so we don't keep like thinking about it and just going over why they did this, how could they do this, how could they take a man away from seven kids, a wife, his brothers and his sisters and like his friends. My daughter is suffering enormously from this. Um, just the other day, it seems like it just really sunk in. And she's like, I'm not going to have a daddy anymore. Who's going to be my daddy now? To be shot in a bed, unarmed, in the head. This is just savage. Sa it, it, it's beyond words. I kept it with me so long. And when I finally let him go, you just killed him. They weren't animals. They were people. They were loved. And we loved them dearly. You had no right to take them away. Every day go back, it gets worse and worse. It don't get better. And my mother and me and the other family victims, we, we having such a hard time. We, we can't sleep, we can't eat, we can't do nothing. We need help. I miss my son <laughs> so much. His daughter misses him. She misses her father. And she asks why, why did they do this to him? He won't be able to see a graduate from school, go on to college. Can you imagine looking into a child's eye, hearing her say this about her father? It breaks my heart every day. And I think about it going on, and she's going on without her father. <laughs> It's not right. It's not right. They had no right to kill my son. No right whatsoever. Please, someone, please come forward. Please, please call a crime stopper so they can get this person off the street. A person, please. Thank you. Do you know who killed me? Alicia DeGreffin Reed was eight months pregnant when she was gunned down here in Detroit's northwest side. Now, Crime Stoppers is offering a big reward to anyone who can help solve this case. I guess how much a life goes now. You could just take somebody's life for $300. A gruesome murder on the 19,000 block of Santa Rosa on Detroit's northwest side. Police say 29 year old Alicia DeGreffin Reed traveled with her boyfriend to this neighborhood to meet someone on May 14th at 4 o'clock in the morning. But something went terribly wrong. My sister got shot in the back of her head, and he got shot multiple times in the face, then in the stomach. Then also, when I got to the crime scene, the door was open. So they opened up the door and they shot my sister in her side, in her stomach. Elisa was eight months pregnant with a boy who would have been born just one month later. We went from planning a baby shower to burying my sister. 
Today, Crime Stoppers announced a $2,500 reward for information leading to an arrest in this case. 3500 if you give a tip by tonight. Elisa leaves behind two children who are preparing to spend their first Christmas without their mother. For our kids to come up to me and ask me, I see, is it going to be funny without my mom being here for Christmas? Or who going to help make the macaroni? She always believed in the Lord. So I know she's at a better place, and I know we all have to grow. But it was the way that she died that kills me and my family. And to the person who pulled the trigger, Elisa's family says this message is for you. We stand strong, and we will not give up. We will continue on for as long as it takes. Police say Alicia's boyfriend is not cooperating. He now tells them that he doesn't remember who he was going to meet at 4 o'clock in the morning. Alicia's family now tells me that the boyfriend also asked them to stop calling him. Anyone with information call Crime Stoppers. That number, 1 800 Speak Up. On Detroit's northwest side, Maria Lou, Fox 2 News. To the person who killed my son, you hurt my soul, my heart my life forever. Without God, I will be nothing. Somebody knows something. Someone saw something. Now that he's not here, uh, it's a void in our, in our family. It's a void in our hearts. We, we miss him. Um, we talk about him. We, we, we cry, we laugh, we had many experiences with him, and we just need some closure in our family. He was like a, uh, you know, a real good friend to have. Uh, he, he died saving, trying to save someone else's life, trying to help someone else out. And we just kind of need someone to, like, come forward and, you know, help us out. You know, this could have happened to anybody. I know the rules of the streets is you see and don't tell. But somewhere, someday, somehow, it has to stop. Someone has seen something. Someone has heard something. It's hard sleeping at night, just knowing that he's not there. Um, his laughter, his smile, him being silly, him just being Cody. I miss my son so bad. The agony that I have to walk out with every day. I gotta live a normal life without him. And I can't, I can't get used to that. I can't get used to not being with my son. Everybody who know him know he was a friend to the friendless. He always told me, he said, Mom, if something should happen to me, I want you to know you had a good son. He said, you gonna hear a lot of people tell you that. A Detroit mother with a passion for helping others disappears. That was more than three months ago. Her car was found, but she's still missing. Fox 2's Alexis Wiley reports her family is now working with Crime Stoppers to find her. You don't know how it feels until it's you. It's a feeling I can't describe.